I love this guitar so much. I love Alice in Chains so much. Well, I love Jerry, Jerry Contrell so much that I made it almost a, a spiritual quest and pact, never to learn his stuff, but to be inspired by it. Which well, is why everything I write is drop tuned and sounds like Alice in Chains. Welcome back, everybody, to Anderson's TV. Uh, I'm here today with, of course, the beautiful Mr. Chapman. Hello. Uh, fresh from uh, Malta, his uh, country of choice at the moment. Um, yes, this is a little treat, really, for Rob. Uh, we got this guitar two or three weeks ago. It is uh, one of only a hundred in the world. It's a faithful recreation of Jerry Cantrell's Les Paul Custom, his Wino Les Paul Custom. Uh, we'll talk a bit about the spec in a minute, but I remember Rob, you know, 10 years ago, telling me about guitar players that influenced him and that he loved and blah, blah, blah. And Alice in Chains always came up, Je so. Well, look, Jerry Cantrell, mm -hmm. not just a phenomenal guitar player, but also an incredible vocalist. And I'm in right. like a writing powerhouse. Because if you because for me, Alison Chains was like, it's all about harmonies, like power through harmony and melody and music. And I think they stood the test of time because they had that ethos of always having beautiful, fat vocal chords, and not just vocal chords, but vocal chords. Yeah. And the guitar was part of that orchestrated movement. I've listened to some of the early, I could talk about this for hours, some of the early demos that they did. Yeah. And it's like the album. They have planned every tiny, all the minutiae, every part that's going to happen is just to the T done. And I love the way that Alison Chains write, and I love the way that Jerry Cantrell plays the guitar because it's it's just enough to get the job done, but never over the top. It's never kind of um, it's for the song. Yeah, everything is about what serves the song and what sounds great. So, well, yeah. I kind of feel that actually this is going to be uh, one of these videos where we get to the end of it and Rob just buys the guitar anyway and there's no <laughs> point in us posting it. Uh, so anyway, we have one of these guitars here. We have tried to replicate uh, the kind of rig that Jerry would have used yeah. back in the day. Obviously, nowadays, Jerry has his own signature Friedman amplifier, which sounds great. The mm. little 30 watt one is one of the best selling Friedman amps that we do and consequently out of stock. Uh, but of course, what we do have, and th there's a certain magic that happens every time you go, let's just use a JCM 800 and a Les Paul and a Tube Screamer. It's, it's just the sound yeah. of probably the finest Half period the in 90s. rock music <laughs> ever. Yeah. yeah, that bit when it went from after plexis, but before dual rectifiers yeah. or whatever, you know, there was, that, there was that bit and this just was the sound. Yeah. And you don't need to do anything. We're, we're, we're not as loud as I thought we would be, because I know this amplifier. We can tell how loud we are, yeah, can't we? I if, mean, I, if I quickly just crank it. Not as loud as we were even wearing those little mini amp Yeah, let's have a look, let's have a look. Like so, 90 decibels? Yeah, so, so we're, not, we're not as loud as we have been in other videos, and yet it sounds faff. F-A-F, <laughs> you know what I mean. Lee, anyway. Can I talk about this neck, Lee? So that's what I'd like you to do now, Rob. I can okay. be the detail guy around the spec, and right. you can be the guy mm. that just is the feel. Listen. And I am getting slightly nervous as you're swinging around right. with the headstock right. terribly close to the edge of that amplifier. It's okay. It's okay. As, they, as they say in Malta, <laughs> So um, if you're a fan of Jerry Cantrell and you've got the money, buy this guitar. Don't even consider <laughs> waiting. Don't, don't bother. It's such a nice feeling, Les Paul. The neck is beautifully made. It feels nice and rounded. For some reason, a little bit more than normal, uh, like they've taken into account, obviously, some of the little basic bits of wear and tear, but the neck just feels like you want to rip on it. Um, it's like a 60s taper. Is it a 60s taper? Have a feel. It's thin. It's thinner, it's isn't a, it? Yeah. yeah. But... It's a little bit bigger than most 60s. Thin for a Les Paul. Yeah, not, thin not, for a Les Paul. Not thin as in Ibanez or yeah. anything like that. The action on this thing is unreal. Like, it feels the same everywhere. It just kind of feels like you can play it really high, really low. It's got all the bite and the growl that you want. And then it's got the super secret amazing sexy sauce that we first encountered on our first ever video, which was the Slash uh, Epiphone. Our first ever video together yeah. where 
as Rob said, we were doing a, a Slash Epiphone video and we pulled out the Slash Gibson signature at the time uh, and it had the secret sauce in it. Rob, tell us about the secret sauce. So you might notice there's a little tiny secret wire just down here, which has got a piezo um, crystal pickup that feeds into this and you can turn it on and off with this singular knob. It's called a Fishman Power Bridge. It is. And um, so you've got two volumes, one for each of these pickups, but then also the Fishman Power Bridge volume control, which is here. What I'd like to do now is play a really simplistic chord pattern that I would have stolen from Jerry Cantrell a million <laughs> times over, and gradually introduce some of the Fishman into the blend. It gives you this crisp freshness to the sound that makes it cut. Sounds like a deodorant advert. Yeah. Um, can I just say as well, we are going to do two demonstrations of how you might use the power bridge. This first one is using a mono regular guitar cable with the guitar and feeding everything through the signal chain into the amplifier. Yeah. Uh, the second demo that we're going to do is switch that out with um, a stereo jack on one end that goes to two monos and then we'll put the magnetic pickups into here and we'll put the piezo pickup through a chorus pedal into st straight into the desk. Yeah. I, we don't know 100%. Jerry, if you're watching, please comment below. Perhaps Jerry's sound man will be able to comment. I, I suspect that Jerry would have used that in the latter. He'd have had two discrete signals and it would have been blended together by a sound man to create one big wall of sound. Yeah. But maybe he didn't. Maybe he just chucked the whole lot into his uh, amplifier and did it like that. And it certainly doesn't sound bad. So let's- How many did you say they were making? 100 of those. We have one. Th they go through the Murphy lab in, in, um, in the USA, so it's the kind of the top, top of the range um, aging and build and all that kind of malarkey. Right. Uh, and it's, you know, I tell you what, I won't charge you eight grand. I'll give you a hundred pound back. <laughs> it's 7899 UK pounds, including VAT. Um, it's a yeah. piece of history though, man. It's pretty cool, right? Yes, and he's a very special person. So it's to so come on then, Rob. Okay, so right. let's do right. so, yeah. no no Fishman power bridge no. for the time being, and then blend it. So in. we're just going to go straight into this one. That sounds incredible. Oh man, incredible. that sounds like a Les Paul into a JCM eight hundred. Yes, there Plus. it is. Let's add half the Fishman. Let's add a bit more. Okay. The, the little glissandy, crispy... It becomes crispy. a bit more percussive, and as you say, glissand... What's it's, that? That's that correct it's word. Like I don't know crisp what it is. Crisp packet 2.5k on top, and then it's like a bit of full Christmas mince pie warmness underneath. <laughs> it's such a great guitar. Could I hear maybe neck pickup, volume backed off a bit, trying to go for a slightly cleaner tone, but and again, blending in the uh, the, the power bridge Yes, you can. can. So, Lee asked me to play just a little bit of the neck pickup without the... Fishman Power Bridge involved. It's quite hard to say, Fishman Power Bridge. <laughs> Fishman Power Bridge. So here is. And now I'm gonna add a little bit of Fishman Power Bridge. Thank you. Well, 
I mean, each to his own and everything. I think there are some interesting tones in there. Um, I've got to be honest with you, my gut feeling is I think we should just jump over to the, the blend now and let our sound man blend okay, the tones. I agree, but also let's just listen to the powerbridge on its own. Okay. Because we, ha we haven't done, we haven't done. It's an interesting tone. It's not a, not necessarily a tone I particularly like. I but love it, is... it blended wow. with, with a yeah, hard, blended. hard right. humbucker. Yeah. Um, now we will switch over to uh, the setting I just talked about. Okay, so we've now got the Fishman Power Bridge going through two little PAs here. We've got a, a DI leading into Pete. It's not leading into Pete, but it's going into Pete's room. Hello, Pete. And uh, so just on its own, it sounds like this with the chorus CE2 from Boss. It's a hauntingly beautiful tone. Jerry, if you're watching A, I love you. B, I love you even more. And C, could you let us know how you use it? Do you blend it through an amp? Or do you separate them and do different things? We're actually very interested. We are. Mm. Uh, so let's get some blends. I'd like to start with uh, maybe going on to the neck pickup and getting sort of some of those more haunting, um, atmospheric tones that we you. might get of the two, you know. <laughs> Just full bore neck pickup, every sorry, bridge pickup and and the power bridge. It's lovely, isn't it? It's it really huge. is. huge. Well, uh, not much more to tell you about this guitar. It comes with this lovely case uh, inside the case. Um, I'm going to guess that Jerry's actual case looked a lot more battered up than this one. Uh, inside the case is your custom shop certificate. According to the certificate, this is number 74 of 100. Maybe you're 74. Oh, if only it was um, 75, the year of my birth. Maybe you were born in 74. Uh, it comes with the um, little checklist and your gold warranty. And it says here that it was inspected by John Lopez, I think. John Fopez. Could be either of those. That's his uh, scribble. But there we are. John did an comes incredibly good job. Some uh, relic gold That's cool. uh, are they relics? locking tuners. Can well, I they're see? Like, yeah, they, they're matching the, the uh, sort of distressed nature of the rest of the hardware. And. It comes with, of course it does, uh, a little box of Jerry Cantrell plectrums. Um, wow. Well, can I play Man in the Box and, and we fade out? I think you should. Uh, <sighs> yes. It's been an honour. Yeah, I'm, a little treat for you there, Rob, Thanks, and I'm man. glad you were here to do it justice. If I had anything um, near the money, it would be immediately on my Christmas yeah. list. Jerry, uh, if you're ever in the UK and would like to come on Anderson's TV, you are always welcome. You can come and tell us, you know, 
Exactly. Maybe you could bring the original one with you. That would be Tell cool. Tell me where I made all my mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, links below if you are feeling super flushed and would like to own that guitar. Um, otherwise, just enjoy. Perhaps just hit that like and subscribe button instead. You do that as well.